We will address in this last lesson the trends already underway towards a combination of technology and the will to overcome this energy and mobility model. Let's break this presentation down into six main trends. Trend number one. Limit the access to speed and parking of the private car within urban centers. Portugal, for example, a bit in countercurrent with Northern Europe, or even with Spain or Italy, has continued to invest in the construction of more car parks in the center of the cities. Until the beginning of the global crisis of 2008, it continued to invest in public road works, motorways, roads, viaducts, tunnels and car parks. Such a strategy has contributed to a greater influx of cars into the city, and an increase in daily commuting traffic. Contrary to traffic engineering in the last century, more roads and more car parks do not solve the problem of congestion, but rather aggravate it. Trend number two. Promote the pedonality and the use of the bicycle. Paris, Brussels, Seville, Lyon, Sao Paulo, San Francisco, and even New York are among the cities in the world that are now rescuing the public space from the automobile to give back to pedestrians, cyclists and urban socialization. Here are some examples. Shared bicycle systems are expanding all over the world. They do not require the purchase of a bicycle and release the user from locks, concerns with theft, allowing it to be easily combined with other transports and promote the use of the bicycle in general, contributing to less congestion, more safety, less pollution and more physical activity citizens. Trend number three. Better public transport. Driven by electricity from renewable sources, with dedicated corridors, focusing on the interconnections between modes of transport, there is a growing trend towards surface meter with dedicated track and priority at crossings. Diesel buses are very polluting and should be removed from the city. Several cities around the world have this type of transportation, buses powered by electric power similar to the electric ones. They avoid the installation of rails and have a greater degree of freedom of trajectory, not forgetting also different hybrid combinations or the totally electric urban bus that carries the batteries in the terminal station. Trend number four, promote the use of the shared car and the autonomous car. The tendency in the younger generations of the Western world to favor the use of the automobile instead of its possession seems to be growing.
the productivist economy, promoter of consumerism saw in the automobile its main symbol and engine of economic growth at the level of GDP. For decades, the automobile has represented the ultimate privatization, autonomy and freedom, our small private ambulatory space that excludes the other and often harasses it. Automobile advertising has always created an association between automobile mobility and the sense of freedom. This idea is largely explored in advertising, where each model is presented on deserted roads, deserted streets, no queues, no pedestrians, no pollution. But the internet generation seems to understand freedom, not in the negative sense of ownership and exclusion of the other, but in sharing, and in the will to join networks. Car sharing has become increasingly popular among the young people of the millennium. There is a growing trend towards the abandonment of the private car within the group of those who join the car sharing. A study by 11 leading car sharing companies found that 80% of respondents who joined the network eventually sold the private car in the following months. Another trend detected is that people who join car sharing schemes also use more bicycle and public transport. It is estimated that for each car shared in urban areas, it removes from the streets about 15 private cars. The aim of Uber, for example, is to have alliances with a number of car manufacturers since the strong growth of the application is raising the industry's interest. The shift from ownership to access and markets to sharing communities will accelerate the introduction of unmanned vehicles. The fully or partially autonomous automobile meets this trend. Brands such as Volvo, Mercedes, Audi, Ford, or Tesla, already market models capable of autonomous driving under certain conditions. HAT the car is autonomous, it does not get tired, it does not distract itself, it can see in the dark, it does not talk to the phone, it does not show itself, and it does not irritate itself. The greatest positive potential of the totally or partially autonomous vehicle is the drastic reduction of road accidents. In short, the future of the automobile in more developed societies will be electric, autonomous and shared. Trend number 5. Both cities and car brands then actively working to abandon oil as the main source of energy. Norway, despite being an oil producer, is also the champion in the production of renewable energy, in preparation for the energetic paradigm shift that is approaching, and wants to ban the sale of gasoline and diesel cars by 2025.
Oslo, the capital, is the city with the highest number of electric cars. In total, about 24% of Norwegian cars are already electric cars. It is not just a citizen's civic conscience, but a strong public policy to free the mobility of fossil fuel consumption. Men uh, grunden til at så mange har kjøpt elbil er vel også at vi har veldig gode ordninger uh, med støtte både til å kjøpe de og at det blir subsidiert litt, at det er gunstig å, å kjøpe og kjøre elbil i Norge per i dag. Da. Men mange tenker jo så klart også på miljøet. More than 200 European cities have already tested the ban on cars entering various streets, avenues and squares in their urban centers. The ban is only one day, but the intention of the municipal governments is for the citizen to realize how the city is without cars. C'est frileux, il faudrait faire beaucoup plus, sonne, alors qu'aujourd'hui, il faut prendre des décisions, il faut avoir le courage d'assumer ses convictions. Ça me paraît super intéressant. On vient d'Équateur et venir un jour pareil, c'est vraiment génial. Que Paris ait pris cette initiative, qui me semble très écologique et intéressante, dans une ville si grande. There are several metropolises that plan to even eliminate cars from their streets. The reasons are several, but the main objective is to make cities more livable, therefore less polluted, and without the noise of vehicles. Hamburg in Germany wants to have 40% of its area, forbidden for car traffic. In Milan, the local administration has decided that drivers should not leave the house with a car to the center of the city. To do this, it created a system that allows to obtain a transport ticket to use in the public network of public transport free of charge. An electronic device locks the car and thus prevents the owner from mocking the system. In 10 years, Helsinki, the capital of Finland, wants to eliminate all cars. Paris also declared war on cars after pollution levels hit record highs in 2014. The city implemented the circulation on alternate days for even and odd license plates. The aim of the local administration is to increase bike paths, ban diesel cars, and allow only electric cars to circulate on certain roads. In 2001, 40% of Parisians had no car. Today, the number is already 60%. Copenhagen, Madrid and several Chinese cities also plan to move away from gasoline and diesel car. All large car groups are actively working for the broader offer of alternatives to oil. After decades of resistance to change, where many projects have been in the drawer, we now see a certain competitive frenzy between brands to adapt quickly to the trends we referred to earlier. Trend number 6. Change of strategy in freight transport. Finally, a word for the land freight sector, where most people find it difficult to imagine an alternative to the existing heavy goods vehicle. The abandonment, since the second half of the 20th century of the railroad as the main terrestrial mode of transport of goods, led to the creation of large fleets of diesel-powered transport trucks, with a strong negative impact on the health of populations, fuel, noise, congestion and the contribution to climate change and road accidents. Once the error is perceived, a return to the railroad is now seen as a preferred mode of long-distance transport of goods. Local distribution in cities with increasing limitations in the automobile traffic, we see fleets of light electric vehicles for the delivery of goods in the local networks of commerce.
it is then necessary to create viable alternatives for the medium haul transport, where traditionally the freight truck assumes a greater versatility and comprehensiveness, to which the railroad cannot respond. One of the promising solutions is the electrification of the fleets, and it is here that an innovative solution with a strong potential appears to us in 2016. For about one year, a road electrification system was being tested in Germany for use by heavy goods vehicles. Sweden, a pioneer in the installation of many innovative systems, will test this track electrification system on some of its roads. Vad är det vi ser här bakom oss? Det är det första påtagliga och synliga resultatet av ett upphandlingsprojekt där vi vill visa möjligheterna att köra tung trafik fossilfritt med hjälp av elektrifiering, alltså en elektrisk väg. Och det här är två, ungefär två kilometer som vi visar här då, med en teknik som Siemens har tagit fram och där man tillsammans med Scania ska köra en tung lastbil här nu i snart från början i juni och två år framåt. Det största nytta med det här är att det sätter fart på den här processen av elektrifiering av vägnätet. Den visar att det är möjligt, den ger stimulans till andra att utveckla sina tekniker också. Så att vi inom en rimlig tid, säg en femårsperiod, kommer att ha ett bra beslutsunderlag för hur vi ska gå vidare när det gäller att lösa den tunga trafikens utsläpp av koldioxid. On the other hand, the concept of an autonomous vehicle also applies to heavy goods vehicles. Let's look at this Mercedes example. The combination of these two concepts, the electrification of the main routes, and the independent capacity of the driving will make all the difference in the transport of terrestrial goods. More information on these and other trends can be found in the supplemental documentation.